Welcome. Welcome to our December parent meeting. So today we are going to look ahead at the month of December lessons. So throughout November, you have been learning that God created man and he created man in the image and likeness of God. But through original sin, the original friendship and harmony we had with God in the world has been lost. But that wasn't the end of the story. God continued to reveal himself throughout scriptures and to different people throughout the Old Testament, making covenants with them, all leading up to his promise that he is going to fulfill in the Redeemer and Savior of Jesus Christ. That's who we're going to be learning about in the month of December. We're going to be learning about our Savior and Redeemer, Jesus Christ. So as a quick review, what did God call Adam and Eve to do? He called Adam and Eve to holiness through the acceptance and obedience of his will. How did they respond though? In the end, they chose to do their will and not God's. What does Mary call God to do? Mary, God calls Mary to holiness through the acceptance and obedience of his will. He called her to be the mother of, the, of his divine son. And how did she respond? She said yes to God. Adam, Noah, Abraham, and Moses, David, and Mary were, were no doubt very special. But does God call only certain people to cooperate with his will, or does he call all of us? God calls us all to be holy. This is the universal call of holiness. By holy, it being holy in all aspects. In 1 Peter it says, be holy because I am holy. We are all called to this holiness and to, do, and to discern what God is calling each of us to do personally. We can respond with pride and disobedience or like Adam and Eve and like so many of the Israelites. Or we can respond with obedience like Abraham and Mary. Throughout scripture, we see the new man and the new woman is going to be Jesus and Mary. Previously, we saw how it was the original man and woman who got us into this mess. It is Adam and Eve, not because of the flaws of God's design, that we are born into a vulnerable of vulnerability to physical sickness, psychological sickness, and spiritual sickness. So in God's magnificent design, just as our fall from grace was brought about through the cooperation of man and woman, so too is our salvation. It was brought through the cooperation of man and woman. For instance, the story of the fall begins with the wicked angel, the serpent, coming first to the woman, and then the woman cooperates. Uh, cooperation leads to the fall of man when she listened to the evil, evil angel. However, similarly, the story of redemption begins with a good angel, Gabriel, coming first to the woman, Mary, and then the woman cooperates and this leads to our redemption through man, which is Jesus. Jesus is the new man and Mary is the new Eve. And our salvation begins at the Annunciation. So who is Jesus? Jesus and the Incarnation. This is what we'll be learning about all through Chapter 5. December is only one lesson, Chapter 5, which focuses on Jesus. Jesus is God become man. Jesus is God is the second eternal divine person in the Trinity, a Jewish man born of Mary and began in, around the beginning of the first century. How did this happen? How did God become man? We use the term incarnation to designate the event of God becoming man. Although incarnate means in the flesh, Jesus Christ was not only flesh, 
but a whole human nature, both body and soul. He co he's also completely God and completely man. He is one person with two natures. One way we can think of this is to say that Jesus, in Jesus Christ, there is who? The eternal person of the word. And two, what's? Humanity and divinity. Think of what happens when someone writes a letter with a pen. It was said, who wrote the, that letter? The answer would be the name of the person. If you said, what wrote the letter? The answer would be the two natures, the human person and the pen. Something kind of like that occurs with the incarnation. So why did God become man? To show us his love, to show us himself, to show us how to be human, and to make up for the damage that sin has caused. But most importantly, Jesus became to the earth to bring to be the bridge between us and God. Think of the incredibly deep river with a infinite with a infinitely strong current. You're on the near shore, the human shore, but you were made to get to the opposite side, the divine shore. And there's no way you can get across. Then imagine that just at one point the far shore starts coming to you and eventually merges with your side of the river, forming a land bridge. This is both near this is both near shore and far shore. That's Jesus. That's why he is the only way to God. Now, what about Mary? Mary is the Immaculate Conception. This is another thing we'll be learning throughout chapter 5, or lesson 5. So Mary is the perfect woman. Wouldn't it be a shame if there had been such a thing as a perfect man, but in all of creation we never see a perfect woman? Or wouldn't it be a shame if Jesus gave us his father to be our father, but his mother was not ours, our mother? Fortunately, that did not happen. Mary was the Immaculate Conception. It has been revealed to us that th through the church, in fact, that Mary is the Immaculate Conception, which means Mary was free from sin from the moment of her existence throughout her whole life. How do we know this? How do we know that Mary was free from original sin? Well, primary, primarily because of the angel. It gives her the title that no one else in scripture gets, full of grace. This is found in Luke chapter one, verse 28. And you, can, and you can't be full of grace if you are contained with sin or the effects of sin. Just like a cup can't be totally filled with water if it has rocks in it. But does that mean Mary didn't need a savior? No, it just means that she was saved from sin before it could reach her. A vaccine saves you from a disease, but it saves you before the disease can get you. That's what happened with the Immaculate Conception. God, who is outside of time, redeemed her, removing the stain of original sin at the moment of conception. Why did God decide to keep Mary free from the effects of original sin? Well, first of all, remember that Mary is the source of Jesus' humanity. So if our Lord was to be a perfect human nature, it makes sense he should receive his humanity from an uncontaminated source. Since Mary's role was the new woman, the one to participate in Christ's war against sin, it makes sense that she would be completely sinless. After all, if she was any way under the power of sin, she would be in a compromised position. She wouldn't be able to give herself entirely in the battle against evil. So Jesus equipped Mary to be his perfect ally, and her role as Christ's ally began at the Annunciation.
Throughout chapter five or lesson five, you will also have a chance to talk about the Annunciation. At the Annunciation, we see what God's perfect love for humanity looks like, and we see what humanity's perfect love for God looks like. God's perfect love for humanity takes the form of a man, Jesus Christ, and humanity's perfect love for God takes form of a woman, Mary. First, God presents his plan to Mary. The angel Gabriel comes and tells her that she has been chosen to be the mother of God. Satan came to tell Eve about making man into gods. Gabriel came to Mary about making God into a man. The angel Gabriel explains that because this child will have God as his father, there will be no need for Mary to cease being a virgin. In fact, her perpetual virginity will be a pre predominant sign that this child is from God, since it manifests that he's not the child of any human father. Now, it had happened previously in scriptures that the angel had been sent to announce births. Some of the cases would be the story of Isaac, Simeon, and John the Baptist. But never before had one heard that the angel expect a explicit message as he, Mary did. Finally, in Mary we see humanity responding to God as it should have. We see humanity in the way it should be. First, she asked the angel how this will come to be. And then she says, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. This shows us that the first she seeks to understand what God is calling her to do, and then cooperates with his plan. This is something new, acceptance and obedience towards God's will. This is the beginning of a new direction of the human race. Mary is the previous and the Mary is the preview of the holiness we will all we are all destined for. And by her yes to Gabriel, she welcomes God into her womb. The work of redemption has begun, and when it is completed on the cross, this man and this woman will be together again. So this week or this month, we're just going to take some time to look at some artwork. This artist portrays the Annunciation. Notice how Mary and the angel both reflect each other's position of crossing their arms in prayer. Mary and the angel are too big in the back to, uh, for their background. If Mary stood up, she would most likely hit her head on the ceiling. Here the uh, artist emphasizes the spiritual decision of the scene instead of the realism. The events that occurred here is larger than life. Notice how the source of light comes from behind the angel in a descending ray. When we look at art, it can be a form of prayer. So just having you kind of take some time to really look at the artwork. What it, how does the art, artist portray the colors, the light, and the overall in this picture. What are the eyes naturally drawn to? What is the ray of light? If you look closely, you can see that there's even a dove in the light, symbolizing the Holy Spirit. This would be a wonderful picture to use to meditate on. If it is describing Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 30.
who are the figures in the fuller vision of the picture? We see to the left. In the foreground, we see Mary and the angel Gabriel and the Holy Spirit and the ray of light and the image of Father over the arches. There is also a bird resting on the bar with the arches. But in the background, we see Adam and Eve and an angel expelling them from the garden. Why do you think Adam and Eve are in the background? Adam and Eve's fall led to the events of the Incarnation, Jesus and Mary as the new Adam and Eve. Through Adam and Eve's rejection of God's sin and death entered into the world and we lost grace. But through Mary's yes, Christ entered into the world and redeemed us from sin, conquering death through the resurrection and restoring grace through the sacraments. How did Mary respond to God's call in compassion to how Eve responded? Mary was obedient to God and said yes to begin to begin the mother to being the mother of God. Eve disobeyed God and ate of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which he expressively told her not to, her and Adam not to eat. Seeing the painting how Adam and Eve are turned away from the angel and the light of God, this contract with contrast with Mary's humble and receiving po uh, posture towards the angel in the Holy Spirit. So just take some time to reflect. What would your reaction be if an angel told you about a special mission God wants you to carry out? Artwork is a wonderful way to pray. We have icons and we have a lot of religious art. If you're looking at a story, this might be some way you can help your children get to understand the story better, to reflect on it and all the meaning the artist might be have, uh, all the meanings the artist is trying to portray. So a quick overview for the month of December. So the Annunciation was God's announcement to Mary that she had been chosen to be the mother of the Son of God. God preserved Mary from original sin, excuse me, from the moment of her conception. Where Eve rejected God brought death, Mary's yes to God brought Jesus Christ. God himself entered into humanity, uh, into human history by sending his only son, beloved son, the second person of the blessed Trinity, to become man and assume a human nature. This my mysterious truth is known as the incarnation. So throughout December, there's only the one lesson, lesson five. It is found in the parent book on page 72. This lesson has five different activities. The activity number five, December gospel, uh, oh, is it activity number five? Let me double check. Oh, sorry, there's six activities. So activity number six is called Advent Season Memories. This is for your monthly storybook. Take time to reflect as a family, what are some traditions you and your family have done for Advent? Maybe draw, uh, print off some pictures, draw some artwork and talk about some of the memories you have in preparing for the coming of Jesus. The other lessons you have are, uh, you can choose kind of to do throughout the month. 
the very first one um, found on page 81, just talks about the different feast days of saints throughout the month. The lesson number two is a activity about the Annunciation. So you kind of read the story in the scriptures, and then there's activities for the students to do in their book. There's, I believe this one has a coloring sheet of Mary and Eve. Lesson three talks about the, in, uh, the Immaculate Conception. This is uh, found on page 86 in your book. And then activity four is about the incarnation. Activity four is what we'll be talking about during our January meeting. Uh, this one has a crossword puzzle found in the student workbook, which is page uh, 76. It looks like this. And then the last activity is a coloring sheet where we kind of learn about John the Baptist. So if you have older students, I encourage them, or just even if, um, with the help of parents, with the younger students, to do the crossword puzzle for activity four. But do as much of that you can. The nice thing with it only being one lesson from the month of December is you can really break it out throughout the month. Some new things that this uh, program has offered is kind of an outline. It's called a, got a December guide. So it kind of gives you an outline if you need help. Here's the verse of the month, the saint of the month and the activity. And then it kind of gives you different ways and how to break up the different lessons. And then an overview. This will be going on the St. Jude website. So if you go to the St. Jude website, stjudeparish.net, under Faith Formation, go to Children's Religious Education. And if you scroll down, oops, I went to, I hit something else. If you scroll down, this is where you'll find all the links and for activities. Um, oh. November did not. So we'll have the uh, recommended videos, the handouts, and I will also put the guide if you would like. This month also comes with some video suggestions that would be fun as a family. The first video suggestion I will put up is just a, something cute you can watch together as a family called Christmas According to Children. So it's these little kids describing the Christmas story and then the parents trying to act it out. So this would be something fun to watch and is great for all ages. Some information videos, the Ignite Your Catholic Faith, God in Human Form. It's about a two minute video uh, explaining uh, the incarnation. This is great for all ages. And then the third video they recommend is Why Did Jesus Come? Uh, this is from a, a Franciscan friar. He has a YouTube page called Breaking in the Habit. He, this is really good for if you have older students who kind of want to go a little bit deeper into the subject. So our next meeting will be on December 6th, so the Feast of uh, St. Nicholas. So I hope to see you all there and have a wonderful Thanksgiving. God bless.